So your new book, Mafia International, you obviously have some people that wrote chapters on your behalf that, like I said, I mean, I, I, th- I think at this point, you know, obviously what's said is said, what's done is done. Um, you know, what's, what's, what could you cover new in your, I didn't read it yet. I didn't get it yet. I, I want, I'm curious. Well, yeah, I, I go into the international, first of all, I go into the black community, guys that know me from South Jamaica and East New York, Brooklyn, Brownsville that, uh, were street guys, serious street guys. Uh, they do chapter on my, on my book. I also, Anthony Ruggiano does chapter about, uh, the involvement with the, uh, the mob, his family. And me and his perspective. You have Ronnie Turch, whose father was a concierge, and my personal friend, who is his perspective. And Klaus from uh, International, guy that was in jail with me in Brazil, his perspective. Yeah. Guys like Justin Beck that were in prisons with me in, uh, from the UK uh, and his contribution to the author and some of the uh, details he gave of Brazil penitentiaries. And there was a big guy, he's about six foot seven, six foot eight even. Uh, and the the uh, relationship we have around the world, all of us, whether you're from Portugal, uh, Italy, uh, Germany, uh, Switzerland, we're all friends, Turkey. Uh, we were all in prisons together and out of the country and our relationship. So that's what the book's about. Not these guys that aren't capable of leaving their block without knowing where they go. They don't even go over the bridge. They don't even know where they're at. Now, these guys don't make two cents. That's why they're on a computer doing what they do, this kid shit. Well, so. Uh, you know, I, want, I want to touch on that because the federal government put a lot of resources, you know, into getting to Brazil. They said, you know, G4 jet, um, you know, obviously to extract you from jail over there, kind of, you know, a lot of resources put behind it. Obviously, the media, it was a big media coverage. I remember the red jumpsuit. I remember as a kid, you were walking out I'm like, you know, who's that? Um, you know, but at that point, um, at that point, you didn't inform. Right. So what happened between Brazil and here? And I understand, you, you know, I didn't, I, listen, I didn't inform. I mean, here's, here's the thing. I'm in Brazil penitentiary and the whole regime is meeting the government. Right. Yeah. So you have Sammy's already a rat. You have Gotti sitting down with the FBI. You have Joe Messina's wearing a wire from the Bonanno family. All his captains are ratting. This is all, uh, keep it in, in time frame here. Yeah. So, and then you have the Colombo family that all got dismantled from ratting. So you got all of them ratting. I'm the only guy who held out, actually. I'm sitting in a penitentiary while they're all ratting and meeting the, the government. So uh, did I say fuck the mob? Yeah. When I came home, I'm not shy about it. I'm still not shy about it. And I tell everybody the same thing. Fuck the mob. Fuck staying with any of these guys. Uh, they're full of shit. There is no loyalty. They're all working, double banging, treachery, informants at the same time and staying on the street. And uh, the only guy that I can actually never say that about was Gotti Sr. The rest of them is always, to me, is in question. Uh, Gotti Sr. is who he is. Whether you like him or not, uh, he was a gangster. And he believed in what he believed in. But when you get uh, treated the way I did, when I left my family and left that ton of money behind, and did the right thing and guys are meeting the government, I don't owe anybody anything. And I'll go back to my Albanian rules. And in my life, in my Albanian rules, you fuck me, I fuck you back. I said, so if they believe in that, I never got my finger pricked, right? So I don't care about their rules. I live by my rules. My rules, you screw me, I screw you back. And I never hid that. So when someone says inform, no, I didn't. And they can't sell that nonsense because I wouldn't have stood in Brazil and I didn't ever fire Richie Raybach because I kept him because he was God. He's seen his lawyer too. So, you know, anybody can, that nonsense ain't flying and you wouldn't have to leave the country if you were working. So well, let, let, let me ask you this. So, um, you, uh, you know, you saw Sammy and, and, and um, and Francis get together, um, to do some type of sit down and, you know, now that you're a little older and you're focusing on different aspects of your life, and trust me, they wouldn't do it on my show because my show is too small. But would you be interested in meeting with somebody from your former life to maybe reconcile publicly or privately to put a lot of this stuff to bed? Definitely not, Sammy. I wouldn't even give him. He could come here and beg me to go talk and make up and shake my hand. I'll never, ever. You know, my personality is one way. Would I ever shake his hand? Never. Now, if you ask me, would I shake John, John Gotti Jr.'s hand? Yeah, I actually would. You would? I, yeah, I would. I, I've said it over years. If he was willing to talk like a gentleman and talk about helping kids with me, I would. 
Sammy, I know never, listen, there's things I've always been honest about John Gotti Jr. He tried to be a good father. He wasn't a piece of shit to, to uh, little kids and, and things like that. He wasn't a guy that would kill a kid, uh, you know, or, or ask me to kill a young kid. So there's things that Sammy did that I got no respect for. I didn't know Sammy. I've always told you that. I knew John. I was John's guy. Sammy was at the club. I wasn't allowed to get close with him. He was around. But with John, I wish the guy would just stop the nonsense. You know, whether we disagree or not with each other at this point, doesn't matter to me. I mean, I really don't care. I got my life in a different direction. Uh, I'm not like everybody else. I can do what I just did, change my life, move on. I'm capable of doing that. I don't exist because of the mob. A lot of these guys, they don't know anything else, and they're not capable of moving on. They're not intelligent enough. Me, I, I, I got a bigger picture uh, is to try to save some kids' lives that I don't believe in this life. And it's not important to me anymore. Uh, we're both free. And he, he is a good father. I mean, he tries to be a good father anyway. None of us are perfect. I mean, I got a ton of problems with, you know, with some of my kids too. We all do. That's what this life brings. But I wouldn't sit with Sammy after that. He's betrayed everybody in his life uh, back and forth. So, you know, would I sit with John? Yeah, I would sit with him, honestly, well, without the argument. I wouldn't even get into any of this stuff. It's not important yeah. to me. You I do because guys are trying to call me a liar. So, you know what? You've you, you already fact-checked everything. There's there's nothing. Everything I say is 100% truthful. So what about, what are they what about, say? Um, do you feel bad about So So, you know, again, as we get older, things change. Look at things now than he did then. Um, do you feel bad about, you know, now, do you feel bad about testifying against him? No, actually, I don't. I still say the same thing. He's free, I'm free, but he, he, he listen, he fired the first shot. The first shot, when you sat down with the government, uh, when I was protecting you, and it, you'll see when I get pulled over.